Welcome back, folks. I was asked to do a tips video for Cepheus Protocol here, and so I'm gonna make one of those. And it's gonna be uh, 10 tips for beginners. But before we get into the tips, I'd just like to say that uh, I really appreciate your guys' support. Uh, we have all we are almost at a thousand subscribers. We we might actually be here when the video go lives. We might be at a thousand subscribers, so I really appreciate that. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. You guys are fantastic. Uh, also, if you enjoy the content, it would be great if you would hit the like button. It really helps out the channel a lot. And of course, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the not notification bell so you know when new content comes out. So. Now that that is out of the way, let's jump into the 10 tips. Now, tip number one is starting location. So the starting location given to you by the game in open world, it's, this only applies to open world uh, because on the Treasure Island map, it's fine. But on open world, the starting location here is not good. It's a trap. It's as simple as that. It's a trap because you have to cross this little bridge to get over to the nearest uh, control point. Control points are really important. You have Chelsea Trader starting right here and she is unkillable in the beginning. Uh, and none of the nearby control points except this one uh, are really controllable. Uh, they're too open. There's too much to, to defend. So I would not suggest staying at the starting point. And I have to say, uh, and this goes for all the tips, the game is in early access, so things might change as development moves along. But right now, the starting location up here that the games give you, game gives you, it is not viable. You want to look for something else. Now, on, right now we are on the uh, open beta, uh, public beta, uh, open world uh, build. So for the, this branch where we have the factions, I would highly suggest starting over here. Uh, because over here, you have the bridge, the other bridge, and those are the two only access points to this entire island. So if you can set up some turrets to defend this or some units to defend this, then you have free reign to go and take this entire island and that is 15 control points that you'll get if you control the entire island that's quite a bit of income and it gives you peace to defend over here and move out with your squads to try and take the other islands and so my suggested starting location on this map is this one now, if we go and take a look at another map, the one that is not part of the open beta, or the public beta, which is, uh, I believe, this one. Uh, let's have a quick look. Then we have a different starting location. And it might actually not be that visible in this load. Yeah, it's fine. Now, again, we started up here. I gave that up. And down here, there are no infected in this area. So you can start setting up down at the southern end of this island. And you can start uh, taking the island. Now, it doesn't, didn't go very well for me in this uh, playthrough, but it could have. Now, another possibility is starting over here and taking this island over here uh, you again only have two uh, control points or two crossings two access points to this island but it's a much smaller island so you will have much less income so really i do warmly suggest starting down here taking the big island here for a decent amount of income tip number two so when I say be aggressive, I mean attack, attack, attack. But of course, don't be reckless. 
you want to take as many control points as you can as fast as possible and you want to capture an entire island as soon as you can because that really gives you the ability to have a tightly packed defense in one direction or two directions and you have control with your whole uh, island so be aggressive get those control points and it's not just that it also times or it also ties in to the next tip which is number three and that is it's all about the money now it's all about the money because everything costs money you make money from holding control points so it's really essential that you hold as many control points as possible as fast as possible to get your income rolling because everything costs money new soldiers cost money turrets cost money uh, better weapons cost money everything costs money uh, it costs money to progress through the phases so the more money you have the better equipped you are to deal with the growing horde tip number four flamethrowers are awesome they are absolutely amazing now they're not that great at killing infected but they are absolutely essential to be able to taking down spawning pods as fast as possible so if you have a group of let's say 10 soldiers and you have just one flamethrower that one flamethrower will actually take down uh, the the spawning pod faster than your nine regular weapons i think so having a flamethrower that can focus on attacking the spawning pod is really really good you take it down quick which means less infected to deal with now that of course means that you will kill less infected but that's okay they only pay five dollars per kill right now so while it's all about the money it's also about staying alive and not getting overrun so taking down spawning pods fast is a really good idea tip number five gather dna as fast as you can now you need dna to take down uh, chelsea which we'll get back to in the next tip so gather dna as fast as you can in the beginning you want to get to 150 dna so that you once you get to phase three have this option uh, of chelsea you know, taking down chelsea trader or patient zero and that brings us to tip number six stay away from chelsea chelsea is impossible in the beginning she is unkillable until you reach phase three and you can unlock shredder rounds so do not go anywhere near chelsea trader if you can help it until you have unlocked shredder rounds once you've unlocked shredder rounds it's fine then she's actually not that difficult but before that she is just impossible to kill so don't even try you have to wait for shred arounds so stay away from her if you possibly can tip number seven turrets turrets are great they are really really good for defense you can set up a nice line of four or five turrets and they will keep almost anything out however one thing to keep in mind is that turrets do not earn you money from their kills so you don't want to uh, deploy them where you're going to lose a lot of money so keep in mind that while it's great to have turrets soldiers are better in the long run if you have the capacity for more soldiers which you also earn from control points so the more control points you, you hold the more soldiers you can have and it's better to have soldiers than turrets because soldiers earn new money from their kills turrets do not tip number eight snipers are amazing snipers are absolutely fantastic you can drop them off on 
uh, high rises, you can drop them off on roofs and they can sit up there with a box of ammo and they can just sit there picking off uh, infected and even picking off spawning pods all by themselves and earning you money while they do it because as I said soldiers earn you money per kill so placing a few snipers around on some rooftops will earn you quite a bit of cash and they will also keep the number of infected down a bit and can even take out a spawning pod if they are given enough time to just sit there firing at it so drop snipers on roofs give them an ammo box next to them they'll automatically refill their ammo as they shoot and you will be earning quite nice cash and also taking out infected on a regular basis to keep the horde count a little bit down. Number nine, control point buildings are great. So every time you take a control point, if you have the money to buy the two buildings, the medical station and the uh, ammo depot, then buy them because not only of course will they heal up your soldiers they will fill up your soldiers with ammo but also when you hold the control point buildings when you buy those buildings it actually takes the zombies longer to take over the control point because they need to take down the buildings first they need to destroy the buildings first even though it's not visual on the map that the buildings get destroyed they do have to attack the buildings and uh, kind of take them out of your control before they can take over the control point so taking over the control point early on and uh, buying those buildings really helps you hold on to the control point so buy the buildings if you can afford it because it makes it easier for you to hold it because it'll take the zombies longer to take it so you have some reaction time before you lose the control point if you have uh, abandoned it and last but not least number 10 upgrade your weapons so you can buy weapon upgrades at the, at the barracks and it's also here that you get the flamethrower for the scientist it's only the scientist that has the flamethrower uh, or can get the flamethrower it's pretty expensive but it's well worth it and you can upgrade your other units weapons as well so you can uh, upgrade your assaults weapons you can upgrade uh, um, adrian winter's uh, weapon you can upgrade your medics weapons you can upgrade your heavies weapons your sniper weapons everyone's weapons can be upgraded and it's worth doing if you have the money it's expensive but it really helps out when you go on the offensive that you have bought these weapons because they are much more efficient than the starter weapons that you get so that is tip number 10 buy your team better weapons now if you found these tips useful and if you are enjoying Cepheus protocol if you're enjoying the content i would really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and also if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. It really helps out the channel a lot and I do appreciate it so much. Every subscription, every like is helping out the channel. You have no idea how much. So please, if you have it in your heart, if you think the content is good, I would really appreciate that. You guys are awesome. And also, I would love comments. I read all my comments and I reply to by far the most of them. They can be just, hey, great video, or there's uh, some suggestions. It can be uh, criticism, but if you leave criticism, I would appreciate that, that it's construction, constructive criticism, not just you're an idiot or something like that. So please leave your comments as well. I read them all and I reply to most of them. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you next time.